circle the correct answer you do not need to show your work no parcel credit in eight so in part a it says the polynomial is continuous for all real values x yeah that's true we learned that polynomials and rational functions are continuous in their domains not only polynomials and rational functions trig functions logarithmic functions and exponential functions they are also continuous in their domains in this case for the polynomial the domain is all real numbers that means this is continuous for all x true the rational function is continuous at x equals 3 we know that a rational function is continuous in its domain so domain is all real numbers but the x values that make the bottom zero look at here bottom is x plus 2 so x equals negative 2 makes this undefined so the domain for this is all reals except negative 2 because negative 2 makes the bottom zero and 3 not a problem so it's true it's continuous so this function is not continuous at negative 2 but continuous at everywhere else so at 3 not a problem because 3 on the bottom 3 plus 2 5 so we can divide by 5 we cannot divide by 0 by the way look at the third uh, the absolute value function is not differentiable at 0 and that's true because we saw in class if we find the derivative if we graph this is absolute value so we have a corner point and we saw that the left hand limit for the derivative is not same as the right hand limit that's true being a corner point by the way okay we saw this in class now here the value of this rational function when x goes to 3 so what i would do is i would just try to graph and see so 3 over x minus 3 so 1 2 3 we have a vertical asymptote because when x goes to 3 this becomes 0 3 over 0 that's undefined and if we graph so we have a graph like this from one side it goes to negative infinity from other side from right side it goes to plus infinity that means limit does not exist okay, number 10 find the value of k that makes this function continuous okay uh, where k is a number if we just look at this first piece this is continuous everywhere for any value of x second piece same thing it's continuous everywhere being polynomials okay but for this function there is an issue at 2 so we just we just care about 2 okay and for the function to be continuous what should happen the limits the limit at 2 should exist that means limit from the left hand side at 2 should be same as the limit from the right hand side at 2 and on the top of that limit value should be equal to function value but we just use left hand limit limit of the function when x goes to 2 from left should be equal to limit of the function when x goes to 2 from right side uh, left means x less than 2 so let's find this limit at 2 so simply replace x by 2 so that's k times 2 is squared plus 2 times 2 right hand limit is here because x bigger than 2 k times 2 cubed so 2 is squared this is 4k plus 2 times 2 4 2 cube is 8k now subtract 4k from both sides uh, 4k and divide by 4 so k equals 1 okay now the next question is the value of this limit oh when x goes to infinity in this case we can just look at the leading terms on the top 2x5 on the bottom 2x5 simplify this 2x5 over 3x5 3x5 over 2x5 x5 x5 cancel 3 halves so the limit is just 3 halves 12 same thing x goes to infinity but le leading terms are not aligned look at here this is 5x cubed over plus you have to be careful 5x cubed over 2x square 
uh, you can cancel so this is 5x cube over 2x square 2x is cancelled so 5x over 2 and x is going to positive infinity so this is positive infinity so whole thing is positive infinity because 5 times positive infinity is just very big and we divide by 2 it's still very big so infinity in 13 uh, we are given the function here is a product of two functions and couple of values we need to find f prime zero so f prime zero means we find the derivative of the f then we replace x by zero so we need to find the derivative first so function is given e x times unspecified g x let's find the derivative so derivative is now using product rule derivative of first factor derivative of e x is e x times second plus leave the first alone find the derivative of second which is g prime x and next now we're gonna plug in we're gonna take uh, we're gonna replace x by zero then f prime zero is equal to e raised to zero which is one by the way times g at zero plus e raised to zero which is one by the way and g prime zero and these are only specified functions but those values are given here okay so e raised to zero is one times g at zero it's given one plus one again times g prime zero is given negative two so this is 1 plus uh, 1 times negative 2, 1 minus 2, and that's negative 1. Final.